Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Wednesdays in Wiedemann. Welcome to those who are looking at us from the live stream and also the live audience in the hall. We are in Wiedemann Hall on the campus of Wichita State University. Today's program features two great French composers, Jean Alain and César Franck. Other than both being French, is there a link between them. Alain was born 21 years after the death of Franck, so he couldn't have known him personally. However, his father, Albert Alain, had been a student of, among others, Alexandre Guillemont and Louis Vienne, Louis Vienne, who was a student of and who venerated César Franck. The musical legacy and traditions in terms of musical culture and composition have always been evolving in France and across the world. And the next generation taking the excellence from the preceding one and then adding on. So when you, you listen to Alain's music, think of from where it came. Of course, his individual creativity and his genius brought an added evolutive brilliance and we'll see that a little bit later. Another great French musician who is, well, close to Jean Alain, curiously, is Claude Debussy. He and Alain, in the space of 50 years, were both born in the little town of saint germain en laye which is to the west of Paris. And although their musical language was different, they both possessed the talent of creating the mystery of the moment in their compositions, a definite impressionism, an interior world which represented a rich interior spirituality, program music. Franck, on his side, César Franck, also developed an original music, musical language with ample melodies and a complex harmony using often six four chords, much like Alain himself did. Both Alain and Franck were influenced, influenced by the chorale and the grand theme and variations form. But instead of using specific hymns or hymn tunes or chorale tunes, they both made up their own. This was a first in centuries of composition, using instead for inspiration a verse of a poem, a paragraph, or a prayer thus contributing to what we call and have always called program music. Alain's two fantasies that I will perform today, uh, the first one was written in 1933. He was only 22 at the time, and the second written in 1936. He was an, a brilliant poet, writer, artist, and someone, in spite of his young age, had a great depth of soul. He loved beauty and life, going from the simplest and most tender to a great contrast to the most grotesque or ugly. The paragraph he uses as inspiration for this first fantasy is dramatic and heartrending, and instead of a quote from the Bible, he uses a quatrain from the oriental poet Omar Khayyam. The translation is, then to the rolling heaven itself I cried, asking, what light does destiny use to guide its little children stumbling in the dark? And heaven replied, follow blindly your own instinct. Marie-Claire Alain, his sister, also says that the dedica dedicas to the chorale for piano could also apply to this fantasy, and that is particularly telling. I want that the earth be square. I want to tear apart the blue in the sky to see what is behind. This animal cry out to the heavens is softened by a little tune that you will undoubtedly hear that he put in for his little sister, Marie Claire, 13 years younger than him. Une grosse locomotive avec un tout petit tonnerre. 
which means a big locomotive with a tiny little caboose. The second fantasy shows melodies and rhythms that at the time were considered primitive. Uh, the elements that he put forth in this uh, composition are a simple lilting melody in the opening, a chromatic chordal sequence, and a Moroccan snake charmer music tune. All this gets mixed up, combined, put together, etc. And the result is what you will hear. The 1931 Colonial Exposition in Paris opened Alain's eyes and ears to North African and Oriental music and rhythms. His interest in jazz is also apparent in, in all of his music. So as always, Alain shows us a simple, sweet side of life that gets opposed to something completely opposite, a grotesque, loud, and gut-wrenching crying out. His premature death at the age of 29 deprived the world of his music, which would have, we can only imagine, evolved over time. The pro here now is the première fantaisie, alors au ciel lui-même je criais pour demander comment la destinée peut nous guider à travers les ténèbres, et le ciel dit, suis ton aveugle instinct, and the deuxième fantasy by Jean Alain.
Cesar Franck wrote the next piece as part of his trois pièces, three pieces, written in 1878 for the inauguration of the organ at the Trocadero Palace in Paris. Uh, they were the Fantasy in A, Cantabile, and this pièce héroïque. It was written around 1870 at the time of the Prussian War, although it could very well be played in, in, with an intention to the First World War, that was many years later. It represented the triumphant, heroic notion of war, in this case, the Prussian War, in which shells exploded all over the city center of Paris, and one can still see today these impacts on some Paris buildings. Fran Franck paints a solemn and moving picture in this heroic program piece of an imaginary military regiment which eventually prevails in battle and triumphs in their its heroic battle. Side by side, we find the eloquence of tragedy and the serenity of calm before hearing the troops marching steadily out again to cry victory at last in a reassuring and majestic hymn. From the trois pièces, here is Pièce Héroïque by César Franck. <laughs> 